Good morning, we're on day four of our pelican tote sew along and before we get started today I want you to check a couple things. You're probably getting pretty low in your bobbin thread so go ahead and check your bobbin see if you need to wind a new one. We're going to start the day with our zipper foot on and for all of today I'm using a size 80 universal needle. I won't need to switch to a heavier needle today. Nothing we're doing today involves the vinyl. We're working on the interior. I'm going to split it into two because the interiors are very different. I'll do the basic first and then I will do the fancy version. But before we split off, there's a couple things that are similar that we'll do real quick together. You're going to need nine inches of your number three tape. You're going to singe your ends and put your pole on like we did for the exterior pocket. And you're going to pull your zip all the way to about 5 eighths inch from the end when it's closed so that your zip will be on your left and the front of that will be about 5 eighths inch from the end of those teeth. That'll just help us uh, get the proper placement and line it up when we put it in the pocket. And then for both of your pocket pieces, for both of the versions, on the long 10 inch bottom side, I just want you to press under a quarter inch before we start and that'll be all taken care of. So now we're going to split. I'll do the basic and then I'll put in the video comments where the fancy one starts. So first you're going to take your two lining pieces and these are the tall pieces from the basic pattern. And you're just going to fold those right in half and we're going to mark our centers. You can do that with a line, you can put a pin in there. I'm just going to cut off the corner just slightly within my seam allowance so that when I open that back up, I have a V and the bottom of my V points to my center. That way I don't have any pins in the way. I'm not hiding my marks when I sew anything on. And that'll just stay there. It's in the seam allowance and not cause any problems. So I'm gonna do that for both of my linings. And I'm gonna do the same thing to both of my pocket pieces. And I only need to mark the tops on these. So choose a lining piece and we're going to put it face up and you'll want a ruler. It doesn't have to go all the way across because we know where our center is. I'm just going to use the number six and I'm going to put it at two inches. So I've got two inches of fabric here. I'm going to take one of my pocket pieces and I have my center marked. I'm going to put it face down so they're right sides together and I'll put that mark at my six right along the edge of the ruler. So your pocket is two inches down and then I'm going to move my ruler down to three inches. So I've got two inches of lining, one inch of pocket, and then the rest of my pocket is here. I'm going to take my chalk If your measurement is at six or wherever your center point is, you need an eight inch box. So you would just go four inches to each side of your center. And then you're going to move that down so that the line you just drew is now at 3 eighths. So from the line you drew to the bottom of your ruler, you have a 3 eighths inch. And you'll draw the same line as before. And then you'll just close up your ends. 
So you'll have a box 3 8 inches wide, or excuse me, 3 8 inches tall by 8 inches wide, and then you should have an inch of fabric on each side of your packet. And just so this doesn't shift, I'm going to pin my corners. You're going to take that to the sewing machine and with your construction stitch, you're just going to sew all the way around the box. Alright, if you need to draw a line that is centered the length of this box, go ahead. I'm just going to cut with my rotary cutter at about the center. And you want to leave about a half an inch uncut in each end of your box. And you're cutting through the packet layer and your lining layer. So once you have that slit cut, you're going to go to the end of your slit and you're going to make a Y shape like you're drawing the letter Y. You're going to cut from the slit to the corner, from the slit to the corner. You want to get as close to this corner as you can without cutting the stitches. I'll use my extra pointies for that. and then flip it and on the other end do the same thing. So you should have something that looks like that. You have a slit and then you have a triangle. Don't cut that triangle off. If you pinned your pocket, go ahead and unpin it. Now you're going to push this packet all the way through and then you're going to press it so it stays on the back side. So you just pull all the pieces all the way through. And it's a little stiff because both pieces are interfaced. And you'll straighten that out and press that down so that you have your lining with a rectangle box. And then on the back, the right side of your pocket will be showing with your rectangle box. If you're getting major puckering in these areas on those corners to where you can't get this fabric to sort of lay flat and I have a little bit of pucker and that's natural and that won't be noticeable. But if yours is so pressed up to where you have big creases, you haven't cut far enough into your corner. So turn it back out and clip a little bit more into your corner and try it again. So in this state where your line, your pocket is face up and you have the back side of your lining, we're going to put some double stick tape on the two long sides of this rectangle. And if you don't have tape or you don't want to use tape, that's fine. I'll show you in the next step how you can pin it together instead. We're going to lay our zipper with the teeth face up and our pole to the left and you should have about 5 eighths inches over here. We're going to take the paper off of both sides of the tape and we're going to start here and we're going to put our open end of our box just slightly about an eighth of an inch to the left of this zipper pole. And then as you lay it down, 
you're going to center your teeth and stick it down at the same time. So what you'll have is an 8 inch opening with a 9 inch zipper. So you'll have a half an inch of zipper on each side of the back of your opening. This is why the tape is helpful because as you press down, it's going to stay where you put it. zipper centered in my rectangle and then I have about a half an inch sticking out on each side of that rectangle. So if you didn't want to use the tape when you lay your lining over your zip you can pin by going through the fabric and the zip tape under the teeth then up through the zip tape and up through the fabric and if you do probably about three of those. That should hold your zipper in place for you while you go to sew. So now you're just gonna top stitch all around this back. I'm using the same top stitch length as I've been using on the outside of the bag. So your zip is all stitched on and go ahead and check your fold to make sure it's not catching when opening and closing. And you're going to flip it over. You're going to take your second piece of lining, make sure your pressed edge is facing down to match the other pressed edge. And you're just going to clip these together. Sometimes I, I'm going to say most of the time, I get just a little slight bowing on this top piece so the center is down a little more than the corners. The corners kind of stick up and that's perfectly fine. It's going to be on the inside. You're not going to notice it. But because of that, when I line up my pockets, I like to line up the bottom edges and then the side edges before I do the top. I'm just clipping this bottom so it stays lined up. Now your bottom of your pocket is going to stay open. This is where we're going to turn our bag or berth our bag right sides out later. So what you're going to do is back stitch, go all the way up one side, across the top, across the bottom, and back stitch, and then leave this bottom open. And that's why we went ahead and pre-pressed that so we can turn that easier when we go to sew it up. So I like to sew from this side. So I can pull my lining over and I can see my pocket perfectly and I know my lining is completely out of the way. So when I start here and get to this corner and I turn in my machine, I'll just readjust my lining and go across. And that is another good way to make sure that you're catching all the pockets. See how my bow in the middle doesn't match? So I'll just sew as close to the top of this zipper as I can, giving myself a straight line. And then these two matching up will not be an issue. And then again, when I pivot and get to the corner, I'll move my lining out of the way and go down the other side of my pocket and back stitch. And you want to do that on your construction stitch. And I go ahead and leave my zip foot on since I want to get close at that top.
All right, so our pocket is all sewn together. You can go ahead and remove those bottom clips. You don't need them anymore. Just trimming up my threads. Now your back lining is finished. So next, you're going to take both your lining pieces and you're going to attach your connectors. You want to attach these with your lining face up and your hardware face up. So our center is already marked on our lining and I'm just going to mark my connectors with a pin. So I'm just folding that top in half. I'll pin the center, open that back up, and then I'll go ahead and use that same pin to pin it directly on the center. So we're centered with that notch of the V. And if you feel like you're moving, kind of twisting and moving around, you can put a couple more pins or a couple more clips, but we're just basing these pieces on. So same thing, lining face up, find the center of your connector, hardware face up, and match that pin to that V. And you can just go ahead and base those on and you can use the same line of baste where you basted your connector when you top stitched. All right, you've got both of your connectors basted to the top. Make sure your hardware is facing out. Now we're gonna flip over. We're going to use our dart pattern again, and we're going to do darts on both pieces of lining the exact same way that we did for the exterior. So I'll just kind of go through that quickly since you already saw that. If you haven't changed your foot yet, now is a good time to change. I put my walking foot back on. Then I'm just going to sew down these darts, remembering to backstitch at both the top and the bottom. Alright, so we need to clip our darts. If you would prefer that your seam allowance be opened against the other side when you sew them on, then clip them with straight shears. I'm just gonna nest mine like I did on the exterior, so I'm gonna clip these with pinking shears. And I found my trash can, so I'm not throwing all my trash on the floor. Now we're going to line these up, right sides together. I'm going to match my centers. And then I'll adjust the rest of my top. We're not going to sew across the top, we're going to leave that open. But I like to clip my top to keep it straight. If you're worried that you may not have gotten exactly center, go ahead and match your hardware as well. And that way, if your hardware is matched, even if you're off a little bit on one side or the other, you know that that'll clip closed when you're finished. I've got my top clips. I'm going to clip my sides. I'm going to start at my corners and make sure that those seams align. And like I said, I'm just going to nest mine. If you cut your straight, you can open them and stack them on each other. And I'm going to 
gonna finish matching my edges and my bottom. One tip I sort of share when people are having trouble making things even and match and line up, remember that you're sewing. When you're finished with it, it's going to be a three-dimensional item. We are not sewing something so perfectly flat and it's going to be flat. You're going to twist this, you're going to turn it, you're going to pull it, you're going to make it inside out. And when all said and done, it is going to be voluminous. It is not a flat object. So don't feel like you have to press all of your seams down and get them all perfectly straight and pin them flat and get to the sewing machine and stay flat. This is not what it is. Pick up your seams. I'm not pulling or twisting or manipulating. I just know that this corner needs to be lined up and this corner needs to be lined up. So I clipped those first and then I decided where the rest of my seam is going to lay. I'm not putting it down here and starting with one thing and going all the way around and trying to figure out why things don't match each other. So again, on my bottom, especially because I have these two boxed curves, this is not flat to begin with. So I'm going to make sure that those two corners are aligned. And then I'm going to pick this up and feel and let it move and decide where it needs to go. And again, I'm not pulling, I'm not tugging, I'm not stretching, I'm not manipulating anything. I'm just letting it move how it needs to move so I know where it's going to allow itself to be sewn together. All right, so on the edge here, we're going to mark at about three inches down. All right, so I just lined that up and I'm put a mark three inches down. And I'll do the same on the other. So we're going to stitch all the way around and we don't need to leave an opening because our pocket is open. We're going to stitch from the top to our mark at a half an inch seam allowance. Once we get to the mark, we can start to angle in and give ourselves a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way around until we're getting close to the second mark and we need to make sure to angle back out so when we hit that mark we're at half inch and then a half an inch from the mark to the top. This is going to allow that the top of the bag is exactly the same as the top of our exterior so that when we sew that together it's all the same size and it fits. But by taking a little extra out of the seam allowance around the bottom of the lining, that lining is going to fit into that bag and be able to push into the corners without having too much bulk so where you have a saggy bottom bag and it's all crumbly and lumpy. So half an inch from the top to your line, angle into five eighths all the way around, angle back out to half an inch from your line to the top. And that will just be on your construction stitch. see I didn't stop and jerk over I just made sure that this entire piece is half an inch and then I just kind of angled gradually until I was at five in eight inch and then the same on the other side I just was getting close and I started to angle out made sure I hit half an inch at my mark and then half an inch straight up I'm gonna pink this because I can pink through this. Um, it's just two layers of lining and two layers of interfacing, but I'm only going to go from mark around the bottom to mark. 
I want to leave my top three inches with the full seam allowance so that I have enough of that to grab and fold open to match with my exterior. It'll look something like that. I'll have this three inches up here and then pinked all the way around. What's most important is that your curves are either pinked or notched and your pocket is open. So right now, before you forget, you can remove those top clips. You're going to go in and you're going to open your pocket zipper. So your pocket zipper is open and you can reach all the way through the open pocket and you're finished with your interior and I'll see you tomorrow. If you're doing the fancy version, hang tight and I'll be right back. All right, this is the fancy version of the interior of the Pelican Tote. And if you watch the beginning of the video, you know you need your zipper foot. Uh, number 80 universal you should have your zip your number three zip prepped with the pull at 5 8 inch from the left end and your pocket pieces should be turned under on one of the 10 inch sides just one not both if you have a directional print make sure that that pressed under is at your bottom so first we have several pieces here that we're going to be working with, a few more than the other one. You have two pocket pieces. You'll have your zipper closure. You're going to have two top lining pieces and then two bottom lining pieces. So the first thing we want to do is find the centers of all those pieces. So you're just going to fold them together and you can pin, you can draw a line, I'm just going to take my fabric shears and knit a tiny little triangle. That's within the seam allowance, so it won't matter. But now I've got a perfect V pointing at the center. And you want to do that with all of your pieces. If you have a directional print for the interior, you want to make sure that your V is on the bottom side. So for your two top panels, make sure your V is on the bottom so that your direction is face up. And then of course your lining panels, they'll go at the top on the straight edge. We've marked the two top panels, we've marked the two bottom panels. We need to mark the top edges of the pocket. And then we need to mark the center of our zip closure. Now you're not going to use this tail to include your center. You're only going to use the fabric pieces. So you can fold the right together, matching your folded ends, and I'm going to mark it separately. I'm not going to try and mark both sides at the same time. Got that. And instead of making a notch here, I'm going to put a pin. And I'll use that pin to attach it directly in the center later. So I've got my pin marking my center, and I can line that pin right up with my V. And then I have to mark my other side. I do want to make sure that it matches this pin, but I also wanted to check and make sure that my edges line up. All right. So there's your center, and your zip will, your pole will be on your left, and your tail will be on your right. So we're going to start with a lining piece. 
face up. And I'm sewing black on black with black thread because that was a great choice for a video. But I'm sure we'll be able to figure it out. So from that notch of my center, I'm going to place my ruler. I'm just going to pick a line to be my center. And I'm going to mark at my ruler, I'm going to have one inch down. So from the top edge, I'm going to go down one inch. And then my center is at my six because I have a 12 inch ruler. I'm going to take a pocket panel face down. So your right sides are together. I'm going to match that V notch up to my six. So now my pocket panel is one inch down. I'm going to move my ruler so that it's the two inch line is at the top of the fabric. So I've got one inch of lining and now I've got one inch of pocket. And I'm going to draw a line eight inches long. So you're going to have one inch left on each side. I'm going to drop that down three-eighths of an inch more and draw the same line. So now you should have two parallel lines. One is an inch from the top of your pocket and the second one is one inch and three-eighths from the top of your pocket. And you're just going to close those ends to make a long skinny rectangle. I'm going to pin the corners so that my pocket stays in the correct place. All right. So my V's are centered and I've got my rectangle and I'm just going to stitch all the way around that rectangle with a construction stitch. Right, you can remove your pins and you need to slit your box in the center. You can draw a line. I'm just going to put a ruler and use my rotary cutter. You want to stop a half an inch from each short end. It doesn't have to be exact. About a half an inch will be just fine for you. And you're going through both your pocket layer and your lining layer. All right, so now you got that slit. Now you're gonna take your sharp snips and from where you stopped, you're gonna snip into this corner and then the same from where you stopped, you're gonna snip into this corner. So essentially, you're gonna make a V piece of fabric. You wanna get as close to that corner as you can without clipping your stitches. And that's why I use my sharp pointy scissors instead of my fabric shears. I can get a little bit closer. All right? So you've got your slit and you've got your V of fabric and don't cut that off. You need that. You're going to flip it around and do the same thing on the other end. And this is what happens. And see how that stitch goes across my corner instead of to my corner and over? I didn't make sure that my needle was all the way down and was on its travel back up before turning. So it never completed and caught the bobbin stitch before I turned. And that's what gives you your angled corners. So I was my needle was out in the correct place, but it never went down all the way before I turned, so it never caught the bobbin stitch to go back up. So it was connecting to the previous stitch, which made an angle. All right, now you're going to push your pocket to the back of your lining. So now your wrong side of your pocket and your wrong side of your lining are touching each other. You're just going to pull all the edges out. So that you have a rectangle gap and then you're going to press this. Alright, so we're pressed. We have our open rectangle. 
A slight amount of puckering on your corners is no problem at all. You won't be able to notice it. But if it's badly puckered or on your back, your edges are like pinched and creased, then you didn't cut enough into your corner and you need to go back in and try and clip closer to your corner. So while this is face down, we're going to put some double stick tape along the two long edges. If you don't have any or you don't want to use it, I'll show you in the next step how you can pin your zipper in place instead. And this is that linty fabric that the tape doesn't want to stick to, so I might have to pin anyway. I'll give it a go here. This really is my favorite way to do a zipper is with the tape. You just can get it so perfect if your tape sticks to your fabric. All right, you're gonna take your zip and with the hole on your left side with your 5 eighths of an inch sticking out here, you're just gonna lay it down. Now after you remove the paper from your tape, you're going to lay this short end on your left side about an eighth of an inch in front of that pole. And then you're going to lay your lining down, centering the teeth as you go. And that's why the tape is really helpful because as you go, it'll stick in place. Just see if I can get this paper off. So far, so good. Start with my corner about an eighth inch in front of my pole. Adjust my pole so it's through the box. And then lay my lining down, centering my zip. And my tape is stuck to my zip, but not my fabric. So you should look something like that, how it's centered in there. And then if you are not using tape, or your tape's not working, Once you get it lined where you want to, you can take some pins and you're going to go through your fabric and through your zip tape, under your teeth, then up through your zip tape and up through your fabric. And that'll hold your zip exactly where you want it. And I'm just going to use three of those. So you've got your zip in place and then you're just going to top stitch with your top stitch and your zipper foot. I'm going to start on my bottom side so that I can pull my pins halfway through as I go. Then when I get to the other side I'll be able to remove the pin completely. I'm using the same top stitch as the exterior of my bag.
so you should look something like that. Your zip tape should be centered in the middle of your rectangle. And then when you flip it over, you should have about a half an inch on either side of the ends of your zip tape. So while this is flipped over, we're going to put on our second pocket piece. Now, most of the time, for whatever reason, and I cannot figure out the cause of this, when I do a pocket this way, I'll end up with a dip on this top when I turn. So my corners are higher than my center. So instead of trying to line up my pocket pieces from the top, I line them up from the bottom because I want this to be even after I turn out because this is where we're gonna turn our bag through, where we're gonna berth our bag. So I line up my bottom edges and then you're gonna stitch with a back stitch starting at the open folds you're going to go up, you're going to go across the top of your pocket, and you're going to go down the side. So I'll clip the bottom just so I can keep my bottom straight. I'll put a couple on the sides. And I'm not going to worry about the top. Now, I like to stitch my pocket closed with my lining face up. So what I'm going to do is pull this lining back to where that zip seam is, because that's as far as I can go, and I'll just flatten it. So then I've got my pocket sticking out. I can back stitch here and come all the way down to this corner. I can pivot and turn, and then readjust my lining. And this is why we lined up the bottom of our pocket. You can see that dip now, for sure. See how they don't match? Like the corners mostly match, but I've got a dip in the middle. So I'll just bring my stitch straight across here, close to the zipper, till I get to this corner and pivot. I'll turn, readjust my lining, come down and back stitch. And then on the inside, from when you open your pocket and you go inside, you have a perfectly square pocket and you're never gonna notice that this top piece ended up being bowing. So I keep my zipper foot on for this so I can get close on that top edge. And then I stitch this closed with my construction stitch. All right, you can remove your clips. You don't need them. And your bottom is open. And the reason we press these is so when we turn it later and we go back to close this pocket, you already have a nice crease here to follow along. All right, so you've got your zipper panel. So this is going to be the back of your bag when you're looking inside. So now we want to add our top closure. So we also want to add it with the zipper to the left. So both of your zippers are on your left and your teeth are going to be face up for this side. And we're going to line that pin up to that notch and we're just going to use that pin to pin them together so I know that that'll stay exactly center. And then I'm just going to go from the center out and from the center out and line up those edges with clips. All right, so you've got your zip centered on the bottom of your lining, and you're gonna take one of your top pieces. So if your print is directional, you should have your center marked on the bottom so that this is how it'll be when it's finished, and then you're just gonna fold it toward you. Again, we're gonna start in the middle. We're gonna match up those Vs, and I'll use that pin again. All right, so we're perfectly center, and then I'm going to clip from the center out on both sides, just matching up your raw edges. 
All right, you're all clipped. You're gonna sew across here with a quarter inch seam allowance using your construction stitch and make sure not to catch your zip tail in your stitching. If you haven't already, put your walking foot back on or your regular foot. All right, now you're just gonna flip this layer up only so that your seam allowance still faces toward the top. You're gonna press that and then you're gonna top stitch on that fold. All right, so we've got that pressed and then we're just gonna give ourselves a top stitch. All right, so now you've got your bottom lining and your top lining attached with your zip hanging down in the middle. Now before we continue to attach the other side, I find this next part to be easier to do while the two lining pieces are separate. And we are just going to dart our corners like we did on the exterior pieces. So you'll need your dart template again and a marking tool, and I'll go through this rather quickly since we already did it once. It's just the exact same. You're just gonna mark your darts. And you'll match up the end lines on the curved edge, and then pinch your point together. Same thing. Match up your lines on the curved edge. And pinch your point together. And then you'll sew those just like before, back stitching at start and stop, and then you'll trim. You can trim with straight scissors so that you can open the seams up. I'm gonna trim with pinking shears and I'm gonna nest my seams like I did on the exterior. And you'll do that for the lining piece you just made and your unmade lining piece. All right, so we're back and we've got both of our lining bottoms darted and trimmed. We're going to start by placing our undone bottom lining face up. And we're going to grab our other side with all of the zippers and everything on it. And this time your tail is going to be to your left and your zip pull is going to be to your right. And still with the teeth facing up, just like you're going to put these right sides together, you're just going to pull this zip up. You're going to line up that pin with your notch. And then give yourself a few clips to make sure this is in line. And then you're going to pull your other top piece. Again, if it's directional and it's facing up, I'm going to fold it toward you. Line up that notch with the pin. So now you're perfectly centered. And then you can go ahead and clip your raw edge. The same thing as before, you're going to do a quarter inch construction stitch. And again the same, you'll flip only that piece up so your seam faces up. 
and you'll press and top stitch. Alright, so you have both of your top linings top stitched. You should have a zipper in between them. And your loose lining panels should be facing each other. So now the only thing left to do is flip all of these sides together. We're going to leave our top straight edge open. And something I mentioned in the other video, when you're clipping things together, try not to wrestle with making sure everything is smushed down flat to the table. See how I just did that there? There's no way that that is going to be flat. You can't get that flat with all these bumps. We are making a three-dimensional bag. It's meant to hold things, it's meant to move, it's meant to push, it's meant to squeeze. So by treating this as flat objects, you're never going to get things lined up if you push and flatten everything. So what you want to do is start with your corners. And if you trimmed your seams straight, you can open them against each other. Or if you pinked them, you can just nest them like we did on the outside and put a clip there. And then match your second corner. Again, I'm just nesting the seams. So one is facing one way, one's facing the other way. And the seam touches its each other in the middle and there. So those two points are good and those are the points that I want to be good. So now I'm going to tackle this center piece. See how just laying it and being flat it doesn't match? I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to let the bag do what it needs to do. And I'm just going to bring those raw edges together. And put a few clips in. Okay, now I want to go to the side. So I've got my corner match. Up here, I want these two seams to match that I made between my top and bottom panels. So I'm going to put those together right on top of each other and make sure they match. Then I'm going to deal with this edge. Again, I'm going to pick it up. And I'm just going to let it fall together naturally and clip where it falls. And then, of course, I'm left with my top lining that I just need to line up the raw edges. So, same thing for this side. I'm going to make sure that the zip tail is tucked away in here. And I just folded it under itself, and I'm just going to put a clip there so it'll stay tucked under. I'm going to match up where my top linings meet. I'm just going to put that seam right on top of each other. And then I'm going to lift this up. And see how when I hold those two points, if I can get both hands in the camera here, how I hold those two points, and lift that and it comes together. So just let it come together naturally. <clears throat> All right. Now we're going to make a mark about three inches down from this top edge on both sides of your bag. So from the top edge to the mark that you made, you're going to sew a half an inch seam allowance. When you get to this mark, you're going to gradually start to come out to a 5 eighths all the way around 
So you start coming up to your other mark and then you're going to gradually go back in to a half an inch. And then from your mark to your top, you're at half an inch. That way our top of our bag lines up perfectly with the top of the exterior when we put them together. But then the bottom of your bag is slightly smaller than your exterior, so when you push that into your bag, you have room to spread it out and it's not going to be all lumpy to where there's too much of this fabric inside your bag because there's nowhere for it to go. Alright, again, so making sure that your zip tail is tucked under. We're going to go ahead and stitch with our construction stitch. Alright, we're all stitched all the way around, a half an inch at the top, five eighths, half an inch at the top. We want to leave these whole so that we can open them up against our exterior bag and get that lined up well. So from the line, I'm going to trim the seam allowance all the way to the other line. And I'm going to use my pinking shears on the whole thing. If you don't have pinking shears, you still want to trim, but when you get to the curve part, you need to make notches with your scissors. All right, so we're all trimmed all the way around. Our pocket is open at the bottom. We have our top three inches still with the full seam allowance. Now we wanna go inside of our bag. We need to open our top zipper and you can remove any clips that you put in to keep it tucked under. And you're going to open that all the way to the tail and stuff that tail back under there. And then you also need to open your pocket zipper so that you have clear passage all the way into your bag, into your pocket, and out the bottom. And your lining is finished and you are all ready to put together tomorrow. I'll see you then.